everybody, welcome back to the Dagelman Farm. Uh, today we're going to work on the fire truck here behind me. Uh, we've had this truck for several years, three, four years maybe. Uh, got it from a local guy here that originally came from Rice Lake. I believe Rice Lake, Wisconsin is where it originally came from. But we've had it several years. The guy I got it from, we never even tried to get it running. That was never the intention. Uh, we just kind of wanted it here for photos and kind of for fun and honestly what kid including me doesn't wish they had a fire truck so now I got a fire truck it's a 1964 I believe and some of you probably will know better than me it's 1964 Ford uh, 950 it's a cab over uh, yeah it's in pretty pretty good shape a little faded from uh, a little faded from sitting outdoors. It spent a lot of its life outside, obviously, but it's all there. Tires hold air. Uh, so we're going to, what we're going to do is put a, similar to how we did the wood shed, we're going to put a deep cycle battery. And I'm hoping the wiring harness that's in there is good enough to, to, to run all the, the power to the different lights that I want to use. We're not going to use all the lights because uh, there's lights on the sides by the gauges there's a lot of marker lights but I'd like to get at least the headlights working you know switch them over to a, uh, a not a real bright but a, a 12 volt LED these would be the turn signals so I don't think we'll get those working probably these running lights maybe the marker lights on top of the cab I don't know so much about the red lights Maybe we'll put the, I don't know. I don't know if I'll do those or not. We'll see how it goes. We don't want to draw too many amps. Uh, the solar panel, it's a 1.5 amp solar panel that we'll use to charge the deep cycle battery. So we're gonna have to mess around with it a little bit. For sure the headlights, probably these running lights here, and then the running lights up on top of the cab, and possibly the red lights on a separate switch. Uh, and then we'll come around the back side here. What all we got going on the back? Well, actually, these must not be just turn signals. They must, uh, maybe half of it blinks. I'm not sure. We're going to have to open that up and find out. But have the tail lights working so there's a red light there. Or maybe that's what those up there are for. Maybe those are just turn signals on. You know, the arrow shaped one on the side here maybe those are the ones that are on we'll find out when we get the battery hooked up I'll want to disconnect the starter on it for sure take the wires off the starter I don't want somebody trying to start the thing because uh, kids will climb in there and people climb in there for their photos and things like that um, these lights here I don't know if we'll get any of those going Think we'll do any of that kind of stuff we'll have a light inside the cab kind of how we did the others so there's you know the cab glows looks kind of cool after dark but yeah we're going to start on that i'm hoping the wiring harness is in decent shape so i don't have to reroute wires everywhere but first i think we'll start with lifting that cab up and that cab has not been lifted up in quite a while so let's see how that works here the cab the whole cab tilts up like that to get at the engine compartment and actually the battery where we're going to put the deep cycle battery is right down here where the original battery was let's see if we can get this you gotta you gotta flip this lever maybe that's it okay that one's already up then you gotta hopefully you guys can see here because i'm gonna need two hands to do this Two levers here. You pull one, you lift the cab a little ways, and you pull a second. There we go. Yeah. There's a lock on here, I believe. Yep, that already locked in place. So there's what it looks like with the cab tilted up. We can get it that battery area easily now. So we'll get the deep cycle battery put in here. Here's the hot wire would have went to the original battery and I believe the ground wire is right behind it yeah there's the ground wire so I don't think we'll, we won't be able to use those wires directly to the battery we'll have to have that regulator in between 
that regulates power from the solar panel. Everything's got to pass through that regulator. So yeah, I'll grab that battery. We'll set that in here. Hopefully that fits in that space. I'm not sure. Can you guys tell me what kind of engine they got in the Ford truck? I, I'm guessing it's a Ford engine. That would be my guess, gold colored like that. I would imagine they use their own gas engines, a Ford V8. Probably a big block. I don't know that much about motors, but I'm guessing it's a big block Holly carburetor. I can see that on there. All right, let's grab that battery. You know, looking at this battery compartment, it looks like it was made to have two batteries. One sat here, and the other one sat up there, I'll bet. That's how that was designed. Yeah, maybe we'll put ours in the bottom one just so it's easier to, just easier to get at for us. Let's do that. You know what we can do short term here till we see what's what with the lights is I can go ahead and hook the cables up the positive and the negative cable just as if we were going to use it without a solar panel the battery's fully charged I had it on the charger overnight so if we hook these terminals up we should be able to see which of our lights if any still work without going through all that trouble and if I remember right in the cab there's a master switch let's try this there's a master switch it's in the off position the on position lights we have wipers we have headlights let's see if we have headlights no maybe we gotta have the key might have to have the key in a certain position switches on vent throttle choke well our running lights work these are on our marker lights four of them not the center one We'll be replacing all those bulbs anyway. Let's see what else works on us here. Let's try to figure this out. Master switch on. I don't know where the switch would be run like the blinking lights we don't even know where to look for that let's lower this cab back down and the fuel pump look at the gate oh boy we don't want that we are running gas all over the place the fuel pump is pumping gas must be a broken fuel line up here by the carburetor. It's pumping gas directly to the carburetor. So we're going to need to disconnect a lot of stuff. All right, this fuel fuse says fuel pump. Let's close the cab down. We'll leave that fuse out so we don't have the fuel pump running anymore. Let's 
see. We'll climb in the cab here and see what we got. Where the controls are. Okay, here, flashing lights. See what we got here. I hear something blinking. <laughs> and the red revolving lights work. But we don't have headlights or or wait. The headlight is on. By God, we do have a headlight there. And so is that one. We do have headlights. We don't have these running lights. The flashing one works. <laughs> flashing one works, but not the running light. I'm just trying to think of how we're going to have to do this because those leads coming out that regulator, I'm pretty sure are not big enough to handle handle those revolving lights plus all this other stuff. I think there's just too many amps there. Maybe we'll have to get a larger regulator uh, that can handle more amperage. I'll have to do a little research. Uh, because the way the regulator works, or at least this one I have, I don't know if they're all like that. I don't know enough about them. And, and you guys probably know, so maybe leave me some comments. But Okay, this is maximum seven amps, which I know is probably not enough. I know that's not enough to run all those lights. Even when I switch them over to LEDs, um, probably the headlights would be fine as an LED and the, maybe those marker lights when they're LED will be less than seven amps. But if we turn on them revolving lights, and I don't know if I can switch them over to an LED style, because they look like an odd bulb in there, but we'll find out. But the way these regulators work, you have a, a load terminal, which would be out to our lights. You've got a, uh, a lead coming in from the solar panel, and then the lead going to the battery. So everything has to pass through that regulator, and at seven amps, if they were to turn that, the revolving lights on without switching to LEDs, we're going to be over 7 amp. I'm pretty certain of that. So I'm going to have to look for a bigger one of these. Like I said, if you guys know more about this, let me know. But I believe I'm going to have to find a bigger regulator. We've got a 2 amp solar panel, which I think will be big enough to charge that battery. Because the only time we'll turn this on, turn any of these lights on, is during a wedding. Uh, during an event, we have a concert or something like that, we'll light the truck, the fire truck up just for looks. Uh, let me do a little more research on that regulator. Let me know what you guys, if you know anything, leave some comments. And I'm going to play with this a little more, try to figure it out before we, uh, yeah, I'll have to put out, find a bigger regulator. And I know there is such a thing. But let me do some research. We'll get back to this project after I do some research and figure a few more things out. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a cool project when it's all done. But talk to you later.